tomorrow. Right now, if you've been to the supermarket, you will be well and truly across this, having seen all those bare shelves. And it's not just in the fruit and veggie section. It's not just in the meat section. It's going through most of the aisles now. There's some things that are missing. And that's due to disruptions to Western Australia's supply chain caused by the recent flooding in South Australia. WA's Minister for Transport and Planning, Rita Safiotti, has just finished speaking about this at a media conference in Perth. And here's a little of what she had to say. I just... um wanted to provide an update in relation to the supply chain challenge that we have to today in Western Australia. We've been working with distributors, with um, everyone in the, in the supply chain to see how we can make sure we continually move product from east to west. As of yesterday, Pacific National has established that land bridge between Wyala and Kalgoorlie. They're using triple road trains to bypass the damaged rail line section and deliver goods to Kalgoorlie. The first road trains will arrive in Kalgoorlie tomorrow, and we expect that the first trains will be departing Kalgoorlie in the next two days. We're also working with trucking companies to expand the capacity of those trucks to be able to move more product from over east to over to here in Western Australia. So companies like Linfox, for example, are increasing the availability of trucks to move product from the eastern states to WA. We're also engaging with freight companies to ensure that our rules and regulations facilitate the movement of that product. And so that means um, new exemptions that will allow bigger trucks through into Kalgoorlie and Coolgardie and then to allow bigger trucks also through to Perth. So triple road trains will be allowed to go into Cal to Coolgardie and then double road trains, doubles will be able to come into Perth. That will increase the capacity of the trucks moving from Kalgoorlie through to the city by about 50%. It also will save time, which is really important because they won't have to go back and hook up their other containers. Um, I've been dealing with and talking directly to a number of trucking companies, companies like Centurion, who do deliver a lot of product from the west to the east, such as avocados and fresh produce. They are now backfilling those trucks with product from over east back to WA. So we're doing all we can to try and move as much product and working with the retailers and everybody in the supply chain to see what we can do. So we've got the land bridge that has been established. We're getting more trucks and bigger trucks. And we're also, of course, looking at the shipping option. And we've spoken directly with Coles and Woolworths today. And they have got some committed um, shipping options, but they will take a while. And that is really making sure that the backlog of supply that is over there can then be brought over here. So it is a continuing uh, process. Also looking at how we can uh, facilitate further meetings between the retailers and the companies themselves to make sure we get a prioritisation of the goods now. Because I think from a statewide perspective, we want to be all working together to prioritise the types of product we need to come from over east from over to here in WA. The update on the rail line is that that should be reopened on the 17th of, the fe of February. So, a lot of movement, and I think it again highlights the fact that we probably need to do more to ensure that we have a more resilient east-west um, um, supply chain connection. So the Deputy Prime Minister and I again spoke yesterday evening, and we're very keen to continue to work together to see how we can improve things into the future. WA's Minister for Transport and Planning, Rita Safiotti, speaking a short time ago at a media conference in Perth. 17 to 1. As the minister just touched on, the shipping industry is being called upon by the federal government to help with m moving essential goods into Western Australia from the eastern states. And this is due to those transport delays, as you've just heard, caused by the recent flooding and the road closures in South Australia. Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce has announced an exemption to the Coastal Trading Act which will allow international shipping companies to carry cargo from the East Coast to WA. Paul Zalai is the Director of Freight and Trade Alliance. He's hopeful this will help the situation, but is concerned the shipping industry is already at full capacity. 
it gives a whole lot of relief to the international shipping uh, sector that, that doesn't currently exist. So at the moment, we have international shipping lines bringing goods to Australia from all parts of the world. They will normally travel around the Australian coast, delivering import and picking up export cargo. Uh, but most of those shipping lines have a whole lot of restrictions, um, not allowing them to move domestic cargo. And that's primarily because um, they don't meet certain requirements with Australian uh, employment law. Uh, a lot of the crew on board ships will be paid a lot less than award wages here in Australia. And that prevents the carriage of a lot of um, domestic cargo around our coast. So what the federal government has done is given some relief uh, to the Coastal Trading Act 2012. And it basically allows unrestricted coastal shipping to Western Australian ports. Um, and that came effect, uh, into effect on the 1st of February and will be in place until the end of March. So it's essentially a bit of an incentive, is it, for international shipping companies to pick up extra jobs. Is that right? Yeah, look, that, that'll be an option. Whether that's going to actually be commercially viable is still un unclear. As we know, we've got our international uh, supply chains, whether it's air cargo or sea cargo, now are at capacity. And, you know, we've got, we've got delays on all kinds of goods um, arriving, whether it's your uh, new car through to um, building materials and, and other items. So the international scene is in a bit of disarray at the moment now and is also subject to a federal government review by the Productivity Commission. So, you know, it's pretty much a capacity. So how much extra capacity these shipping lines will have to be able to carry cargo around the country will be very interesting to see. Do you think it's enough of an incentive for international companies? Look, let's hope so. Let's hope it really can provide the option now in this time of real need. You know, we're just seeing the incredible rainfall through South Australia and it's just unbelievable to see that, you know, the rail and road is really blocked off. But uh, maybe it's a, it's a signal to the federal government, whether this government stays in power or a new one comes in, that we need to have a lot closer look at coastal shipping in general. Now we're in crisis mode and we're, we're basically making policy on the run, but maybe it's a good catalyst to have a look at coastal shipping as a viable long-term option. But bearing in mind, there is a whole lot of sensitivities, which we understand, um, and, uh, and particularly with a lot of the waterfront unions as well, got serious concerns about uh, the conditions that international crews uh, may be operating. So very complex situation, but something that maybe this might be the catalyst to get some serious review into this topic. Director of Freight and Trade Alliance, Paul Zalai with Georgia Hargreaves. 13 to 1.